Hey, Abbott, what time is it? It's time for the Abbott and Costello Show. We're on the air for ABC here in Hollywood. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go with the Abbott and Costello Show. Yes, it's the Abbott and Costello Show. Produced and transcribed in Hollywood for your listening and laughing pleasure. Chuckles with a carload and music by Matty Malnick. So hold on to your chairs, folks, for here they are, Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. Why am I late again? Yes. Well, I've been helping my Uncle Tom Zizimas in his butcher shop in Baltimore. He's having a sale on lamb chops for $4 a pound. Wait a minute. He sells lamb chops for $4 a pound? Mm. What does he pay for them wholesale? About six cents a piece. <laughs> then what makes the lamb chops so high? It's them little paper panties. The garment workers union don't, pay, don't work for nothing, you know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, that talk says, but why, why, why are you limping? Well, when I was coming to the studio tonight, a big dog in the parking lot bit me on the leg. Costello, the dog, that dog might have rabies. Oh, gee, I hope he does. He'll name one after me. I... <laughs> you dummy. Oh, I call it Easter rabies. Ah, stop, you dummy. Was there, was there ever anybody in your family that wasn't an idiot, Lou? Oh, sure, my great-grandfather. When George Washington crossed the Delaware, my great-grandfather, Valley Forge Costello, was the first man to jump out of the boat. He was? Yes, but Washington made him get back in the boat and go across anyway. <laughs> <laughs> he was the sixty. Well, never mind that. What makes you look so tired? Didn't, didn't you get any sleep? Oh, I snored so loud, loud last night, I kept waking myself up. Well, if you snored so loud, why, why didn't you do something about it? I did. I moved to another room. <laughs> Then I dreamed about Marilyn all night long. Uh, by the way, how are, you, uh, how are you getting along with Marilyn? We're hitting it off pretty good. You are? Yep. I keep putting my head on her shoulder and she keeps hitting it off. <laughs> Costello. All right. <laughs> Costello, why don't you go back with the rest of the baboons? Okay, any message? Get them out of here. <laughs> Ah, oh, yes, the boys are on the beam tonight. And they'll be back on it in just about one minute. But first, let's hear this. The best things in life may be free. The moon, the sun, a rare day in June, the right summer. But one best thing in life costs quite a few greenbacks. It's a home of your own. And that's exactly what seven couples have an opportunity to win this evening when they go for the house. Go for the house is the wonderful show on which contestants can win a beautiful new honeymoon house of their own. Each Thursday night, M.C. John Reed King calls seven couples up to the ABC microphone. Each couple selects a room of Honeymoon House to furnish, and as they answer each of seven questions correctly, a different prize goes into the house. After the third question, they can take their prizes or go for the house. If they answer their seventh question, they win the Honeymoon House. For a show filled with 30 minutes of excitement and suspense, don't miss Go for the House this evening over most of these same ABC stations. And now back to ABC's Abbott and Costello Show. Hey, Abbott! All right, all right, all right. Well, wait a minute. Why are you doing that rubber doll? Uh, what are you doing with that rubber doll? It's a present for my sister's baby, Tony. He's one year old today. Uh, has the baby learned to walk yet? Ah, but the kid is only one year old. He only learned how to drive the car last week. What? <laughs> what's, what's the baby's name? It's my sister's fifth baby, and she named it Ming Toy Lotus Blossom. Ming Toy Lotus Blossom? Mm. Why did she name the child that? She read in a big book that every fifth child born is a Chinese. I... <laughs> That, Lou. Uh, what is your sister's husband doing now? Huh, what's he doing now? He yeah. had a little filling station. And what a filling station. But they picketed him and closed him up. Now he's hoping they skunk farm. A skunk farm? 
Mm-hmm. A skunk bomb. He figures that's one business the union won't stick their nose in. <laughs> I haven't seen your brother-in-law in a long time. How, how is he, Lou? Ah, uh, you wouldn't know him, Abbott. The no. sands of time have changed his face. Well, he's only a young guy. How could the sands of time change his face, Costello? My sister belted him in a puss with an hourglass. <laughs> <laughs> Where are your sister and husband he living now? He now has granulated eyelids. Yeah. <laughs> Lou. <laughs> Where are your sister and husband living now? I'll let you know in a second here. <laughs> in the middle of the page. I'm in it. <laughs> They're living in Pasadena, and boy, is that a ritzy town. Oh, no, 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 it's not so ritzy. Yeah, but Pasadena's so high class that they stop all the tourists at the city limit and make them rent mink coats before they can drive through town. No, I don't believe it. I know, I know. Ah, stop, I don't I believe that. I don't there. believe that. Huh? I don't believe it. You don't believe it? No, I don't. My brother Pat used to drive a truck for the city of Pasadena. He told me that all the garbage he picked up was gift wrap. Oh. <laughs> You mean your brother Pat drives a garbage truck? Oh, he's just doing it until he gets his new invention on the market. His invention will change the whole toothbrush industry. What is it? A tooth on a stick to clean brushes. <laughs> Costello, let's face it. Your brother is nothing but a bum. I beg your pardon? I said your brother is nothing but a bum. Abbott, that's why I can't sleep at night. <laughs> Thinking what a bum my brother Pat is. Well, if you can't sleep, why didn't you count sheep? I did. Once I counted the 10,000 sheep. I was just ready to fall asleep when along came a black sheep, and I got to thinking what a bum my brother Pat is, and I couldn't sleep the rest of the night. <laughs> Costello, with all the thousands of people that have no place to live and are looking for vacancies, how can you walk around with a big empty head like that? <laughs> Show me in the script where it says anything like that.